everyone. My name is Scott Mance, and welcome to Half Hour with Ted Lasso, winner of two back-to-back Emmy Awards for Outstanding Comedy Series. So well-deserved. Very excited for today's conversation with executive producer, co-creator, writer, and actor Brendan Hunt, as well as actors Jeremy Swift and James Lance. Gentlemen, welcome. Congratulations. So excited to talk to you about season three. Brendan, I want to start with you. The question is, after the success of season one, when you went into season two, you prepared season two and went into that, and then after the success of season two, what were the new challenges you faced with getting into season three? In season two, um, some uh, some dramatic things take place that um, that that you know tear things apart a bit for our characters. Um, you know, tear them away from each other. So we knew going into season three, it's going to be a matter of how do we do we you know reconstruct uh, you know Voltron. Um, <laughs> Or do we want to reconstruct Voltron? And um, and that you know before that though it, it would be, you know it would be disingenuous to sort of like fix everything right away again if we fix anything. Um, so we were going to have to live in this sort of broken world for a while um, and see what we could make of it. Wow, that's a, that's a, a a lot to go into because one thing I noticed and it, it maybe like even within the first episode of season three is that the tone is deeper. It's uh, it's a little more serious. It's a lot more profound. And also the dynamic is, is even more of an ensemble than it was in season two. So Jeremy, uh, what was your take on just how profound things got in season three and also just how much like the ensemble really was an equal ensemble for every actor and actress. I think that's very true. Um, I think there's a great balance of um, going deeper into the characters, but also um, the the creatives know that the um, audience are now au fait with the nuances and idiosyncrasies of the characters. So. It was very revealing when we had the first two episodes um, premiered in LA about uh, six weeks ago, whenever it was, um, that people, you know, it was just a raised eyebrow from one character. Um, mm. You know, the audience got it. Um, so that's very astute of the clever old writers that we have. <laughs> um, and of course, balancing it out with a ton of other things, you know, Easter eggs that I don't necessarily get, oh. and um, you know, great comedy. And as you say, you know, and in particular, um, I think what you you might be implying is like the the team who sort of, you know, their bounce around, uh, you know, <laughs> the conversations are just fantastic. Now they're the kind of Keystone Cops, um, <laughs> very old reference uh, of the show. And, um, and and that has been upped and it, yeah, it's it's a job beautifully done. I, re- I really think that the show is in a kind of mega stride now that um, that accepts the, accepts its uh, it, you know it's it's perfect on the world and runs with it. And um, very pleasurable it is too. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's really it's really something. And I got to say that uh, on top of of everything how all of the relationships, all of them, the dynamics have changed in such a way that really keeps the show fresh. I mean, everyone is discovering very new territory, James, especially in the case with Trent, starting with, but not limited to, and I'll get to that part in a moment, but you know, Trent's kind of part of the team now in a way. Uh, what was that uh, shift like for you to kind of, you know, change the dynamic with Trent from writing, you know, sort of not being trusted by Richmond to, you know, really being on the inside now. Yeah, it is a real journey he goes on right from, you know, opening um, episode of season one where he was he was going to just sort of take down uh, Ted um, to where we find him now, um, you know, in the coach's office and with his own um 
his own little space to to write and observe the team. It's extraordinary. I always felt that Trent was probably one of the last to be picked on the team at school. Yeah. And I felt that he would have loved to have been part of a team, you know? Um, and so when this, uh, this opportunity arises um, for him to, to come into the team, it's kind of like, a, it's, it's a bit of a little um, dream for him. And, you know, there's that bit where he walks into the locker room for the first time and everyone just totally um, shuns him. He's used to that. He's used to that. And I, always, I think that's why he developed this, this public persona of this sort of quite uh, hard-nosed, cynical character. Um, but, you know, he, uh, he, he hangs in there and, um, and, and then slowly just, you know, and naturally relationships start to develop. And, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a, it, it, he, he does, it's, it's quite healing, I think, for him to be in there and, uh, and welcomed and, and um, uh, accepted, you know. You, you, you just see sort of a little uh, a, a glimmer in his eye being on the inside and just sort of seeing people like warm up to him like, oh, OK, he's writing about us now in a good way, hopefully. You know, Brendan, I would love to be a fly on the wall in sort of the writer's room, so to speak, uh, with you and with Jason, with everyone like thinking, OK, what can we do with season three? How can we shake up some of these relationships? I never would have guessed watching season one that Roy and Jamie would turn into the relationship <laughs> they have in season three. What was sort of the, the genesis of that? You know, who, who like said, Hey, let's like bring these guys together. Or was that always part of the plan from the beginning? Um, it was not part of the plan from the beginning. And, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that we, you know, we just decided to, you know, find things to shake things up. I, I think, you know, we just discovered that, the natural evolution of this is that they they become you know sort of peers um and it's it's kind of funny that you know the journey to to peership is and perhaps even friendship is um mentorship first when uh, when roy says you know fine <laughs> i'll i'll tell you everything i know um and now they are where they are um, we still have a few episodes left. We'll see if, uh, if that boat gets rocked at all, but, um, <laughs> but it, um, it's, it's been, it, it was a surprise to us in the room that that's just like, it became clear, like, oh, that's the path. That's what's going to happen. And, and it has been super fun to write. You know, those two are, uh, their scenes have always been fun to write and to shoot. Um, you know, not least because they, they crack each other up so much, um, that, uh, you know, the, it, they're just a different energy when it's, when it's those two on camera. Um, and so to bring a still further different energy to their different energy has been super fun. Yeah. I, I gotta say like, you know, I, I love their dynamic in the first season, but I'm watching this, especially when they go on their run, you know, through Amsterdam, I'm like, I, I like this. I, I like them like getting along. Um, Jeremy, I want to ask about filming in Amsterdam for you, for the crew, for the cast, uh, uh, just overall, what was that like to to really be in a fresh new area uh, with everyone? Um, it was great. Uh, I I've only been to Amsterdam once before, and I really really loved it. Um, uh, and uh, I don't do an awful lot of location stuff. I never get to go in Richmond Green. I think I did once in the first season. Uh, so yeah, it was it was great fun. I, I think what the show does so well is because they can sort of go, who shall we mix up? To? I wonder if they have all, you know, like Lego pieces. Oh, let's put these two together. Um, because, um, you know, putting me together with Charlie was such a great idea. We saw, seemed to make the same sort of uncertain sounds. Um, <laughs> and um, and, and the, 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 the whole the whole idea of the, the, the pilgrimage to, to for Chet Baker was, was just, well, you know, it's just a fabulous episode and Brendan should, you know, win many, 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 many prizes for it. Uh, but I really, really loved it. And I was very grateful to Brendan for the opportunity to do a bit of bass. I was a little bit scary because it's, you know, it's really, um, for me, uh, it's, a, it's an intellectual and sort of private pleasure to, in a way, to play the bass. Although that's ridiculous because you can't really play the bass on your own, but I do. 
Um, but uh, so to play with um, some, you know, ridiculously talented people was 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 fabulous as well. Um, and we, um, um, as some people might know that we we filmed in that day. I didn't really get to go out because it was a very long day in the in the club on the club set. It was the King's Day in Amsterdam, where you, for some reason, dress up in orange and you have like a you know car boot sale kind of thing going on. And um, Brenton, I think, wore everything. I didn't see his underpants. I have to say, they were um, orange. They were orange. <laughs> of course they were. Of course they were. But everything, he just took it to the max, and um, that was marvelous. Wow. I mean, I just, I mean, honestly, uh, to to be able to, you know, three seasons in, just have just so much exploration of your character, you know, as, as actors and certainly, uh, you know, for the writers and producers too. But I got to say, so the scene where we learn about Colin, mm. which I did not see coming. And then there's Trent, like basically saying, I'm right there with you, you know, for, for Colin to come out and then for Trent to come out, uh, I'm thinking to myself, did I miss something? Like, should have, is this something I should have seen from the beginning in season one? So, so James, like, uh, was that there and just, just sort of like real subtle and just, it was, would have been easy to overlook. Like how did all that come together? And what were the conversations you had with Brendan, with everybody about where Trent and Colin went this season? That was amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, there, a lot came out of a three minute conversation I had with Jason in season one, um, where I just mentioned that I felt that Trent had a had an oppressive father. And then he said to me, wow, you know, this series is all about bad dads. And I was like, no, I had no idea. And, and then I was talking about um, that uh, Trent's dad wanted him to be a man's man and et cetera, et cetera. And then he went to the library and donned an intellect. Um, and, but I felt that he wasn't living the life he, he wanted to live. And, um, and we, 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 we started talking about that. And, um, and uh, that's, so that kind of opened up from that conversation as far as I know. And um, there is a little moment in season two um, where um, Trent bumps into Ted in the pub and you see um, who he's with in the back of the shop before and he, he's he's on a date and um, it's very, very subtly done. And, uh, and I only knew that was going to happen a, minutes before I met the guy um, who I was doing um, that moment with uh, because Jason said, oh, and you're here with that guy. And I, I looked at the guy and I said, I'm here with that guy. And he said, <laughs> You're here with that guy. I was like, cool. <laughs> and, 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 Deep day um, casting. Yeah. And um, I've never seen him since. I don't know. I, I enjoyed it, but he's never, he's, he, he's gone. Ghosted um, you? He ghosted me, baby. <laughs> People nowadays. It's because I saw Ted and ran after him for a minute. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I mean, <clears throat> what an extraordinary scene that was to play for all the reasons um that it needs to be played and to be sort of a, a, a co co-performer in that it was it was a real privilege and um and and an essential moment i think um uh the idea of of, of the idea of anybody uh, not living uh, their life authentically and who they really are is is something that you know um I, I personally get very moved by um, when you see uh, the liberation ha occur. And um, it's such a powerful scene, I think, A, because of the extraordinary performance from Billy Harris, um, who just says it as it is. And um, it, all, all I really had to do as Trent was listen and um, one of the things that I love about that scene is, is it really shows how important it is for us to listen to each other and create that safe space. And, um, you know, Trent is, is, is obviously, you know, sort of the older guard and he's lived a different, um, 
existence, but there's a lot of crossover with um, Colin. And so the empathy is ready to catch him. I mean, it's there and that's all he wants to, to show him is that it's okay, you can, I, I've got you, I've got you. And it is healing, it's an extraordinary thing. Um, and that's everything that, you know, Trent would have liked to, to happen to him. And one would hope he's had those moments as well, but it was really cool to play that, especially when you think of Trent, when you first meet him, it's probably the last person you would think that would create such a safe space. So yeah, it was great. That, I think that really, you hit the nail on the head with that because he is the last person that I expected <laughs> to create such a safe space. I mean, with Colin, like when he just says, Hey, I'm, you know, right there with you. And you're like, like, I literally was watching it at home, like, you know, watching TV comfortably. And I literally like sat for like, oh my God, like this is, this is, it, it's beautiful. So I, when I spoke to Billy, he said that you filmed it in three takes and it was the third take that was the best. Do you mm. remember that? That for yourself, thinking like, oh, the third take. Uh, yeah, I think that was the best for me as well. I don't remember that actually. I I um I loved every take. I really, <laughs> <laughs> I really, I liked every take. Um, there was something about sitting there, uh, you know, where the bells of the Vesterkirk, right there, you know, um, where you know, um, young Anne was listening all those years ago, when in her own state of um you know, oppression. It was something very, very magical that night. It was about four o'clock in the morning, maybe, I think, as I remember it, four, nearly five. It, it was, everyone was asleep, apart from the odd sort of drunken straggler, you know, um, coming through, which we waited for. And yeah, it was, it, it, it had, it had a real energy, obviously being on the Homie Monument as well. Um, I just loved every single second. <laughs> yeah. So I can't remember which take. That, that, that episode in particular, uh, I mean, the whole season so far has been great. Um, but that one in particular was like a, probably one of the best of the of the series so far. And Brandon, I'm just curious, like, like how that scene even came together. Um, well, it's a subset of figuring out what was going to happen in Amsterdam. Um, you know, we talked through a lot of options for for all the characters um, and. You know, we we knew that Colin and Trent were going to have, um, uh, you know, a moment at some point. We weren't sure if it was going to be in Amsterdam or not. But then we eventually decided that Amsterdam was the right place for it because, you know, what we're, we're trying to show many aspects of of what Amsterdam gives people, um, you know, what it can give people, you know, creatively, romantically, um, uh, you know, in platonic friendships, um, on and on, but also gay Amsterdam is very much a thing. Um, and uh, it's, you know, allegedly, uh, the, allegedly described as, um, you know, the gay capital of Europe. Um, and, you know, the Homo Monument is, is a thing and it's there for a reason. Um, so there's a certain, there's a certain gravity to that, that drew Colin and Trent, um, Colin and Trent's story into that episode. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm 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 super glad it did, and, and for the work that uh, that Jimmy and Billy did there. Oh, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, Jeremy, I want to ask uh, you know all of the work that you've done with Hannah Waddingham up to this point, uh, the evolution of of uh, their relationship, the evolution of her character. Uh, you know, when you all came together for season three, especially progressing through and past Amsterdam. Um, you know, what is it about Hannah? That that just makes her so such a, an amazing actor in your in your point of view, especially. Um, I think it's um, she has a lot of confidence, <laughs> and she has, a, <laughs> she has a lot of musicality. Uh, she's got a lot of experience um, of stage experience, and she's brought that uh, confidence to the screen. And I think that you know there is a symbiosis with comedy and and music. And um, I think uh, the, from the very first scene that I did with her um, way back, because uh, I'm a musician as well, I think we had a simpatico. Um, and it's great to have seen it to develop from this very polarized relationship to, you know, the 
her calming the waters after Ted waved his magic wand in the first season and um, and upped his status. And so he's much more comfortable in his own skin and she accepts that. And um, But, the, you know, there is still room for um, some jocular stuff as well and some comic misunderstandings, which, you know, I'm very appreciative of. Um, but... Um, but it's it's great to see you know the balance of that again that's what the show does so well you know you can tell that there is you know mutual respect there that that toxicity has has you know they've moved away from that place and um yeah but it's it's still very rich theme i think you know between them yeah oh it's so great it's so great i love watching the dynamic between you and hannah it's so rich and and also brendan i want to ask uh, you know talk about like just flipping relationships and changing dynamics, then you have this really, really interesting relationship moving forward with Keely and with Jack, played by Jody Balfour. Uh, so so what's it like working with those two actors, uh, especially you know, Juno Temple, who's just like, just keeps topping herself season after season? Um, yeah, those scenes were really, really fun to shoot. Jody was great to have around um and uh you know she has a different energy than anyone else on the show um and the two of them together um you know they are there they are more than some of their parts um you know that storyline um uh you know there's there's more to come there in that storyline so i can't get into it too much but uh you know in, in terms of like looking back to season one and then finding out you know, finding like, what are the things that we're going to keep going with, keep exploring? Well, you know, Keely's bisexuality is established uh, in passing in season one, uh, right before they all go off to Liverpool. Um, and um, it was fun to finally get around to <laughs> to uh, to exploring that, um, even if the cost is, you know, the relationship with Ron. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. I want to ask uh, James about, you know, working with Jason as an actor, uh, but also as a writer and as a producer, uh, how has sort of the the success of uh, the first season and then the second season sort of given not just Jason, but you, Brendan and everyone just a lot more confidence to take bigger swings this season to be more ambitious. But but from from your perspective, working with Jason, James, uh, what's that like? I well. There's there's two relationships running at, one, at the same time, right? So yeah. for me, there's obviously there's me working with Jason, there's James and Jason, but then there's Trent and Ted, and obviously I'm always looking at it through the through the lens of um, Trent, and um, there's just something inherently funny to me about that relationship. Um, I mean, by, by funny, I don't mean weird. I mean amusing. There's, 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 there. You know, from the moment I first looked at Ted as Trent, he looked like an alien that had landed in my world and in this press room. And he's like, sort of, you know, this could have been. I mean, almost like Ronald McDonald walked through the door and, and was going to now run the team. I'm like, is this a fucking joke? You know, and to, 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 you know, quite quickly, even in. Um, episode three of season one in the, in the when we go for an, a meal and then seeing the way that he uh speaks to the waiter and and treats people and talks about how the boys being the best versions of themselves both on and off the team and that this isn't about winning he's just he's, he's messing with Trent's mind you know and because he's not what he assumes um wrongly assumes that he is so there's always a constant revolution going on there's a curiosity uh uh, that is always in play with Trent uh, and Ted, which of course works beautifully with his journalistic mind, but also the subject matter of Ted is just a, 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 con a constant carousel of joy for, for Trent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, that, so that, like he could happily just watch him. <laughs> um, and I think some fans have observed that and, and you know, it's, uh, there's a sort of that, that has blossomed into a yeah, there's there's a warmth there. I'm a huge fan of the man. I think he's I think he's a magician, and I think that what everybody's doing on the show is 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 magic actually. So it's it's a real privilege to to be there. What's been the reaction for you? Like, what's it been like for you to like sort of get this delayed response of people who have just fallen in love with the show and with with Higgins? <laughs> 
uh well yes it is it is if not delayed certainly staggered uh response because you know it was uh, uh, ostensibly social media uh, uh, initially um which you know uh, i'm not on twitter anymore but i when i flicked through all the comments about the show they were so um you know extravagantly positive i couldn't quite I've never, I've never had anything like that before. I've never appreciated anything like that before. And I looked for the kind of inevitable toxic one and there weren't any. When we had a premiere in LA of the first two episodes of season two and, um, and there was a red carpet thing and um, I thought, oh, I'll go first. I'll get it out of the way kind of thing, you know, <laughs> and, um, and then just enjoy watching the episodes. And so I was the first there. And then I didn't know that just where the red carpet was, there was a grandstand of about 500 people and they all went absolutely cuckoo crazy when I got out of the car and I, and I I, I was looking around for this. Oh, Hannah must be. Oh, is and that's and that was a kind of switch <laughs> life experience. Or it, my brain literally calibrating, going, "You have never experienced this before. This is completely new." And blah, blah, blah. You know, oh my god. Um, and now you know. Um, I mean, um, Jimmy and I just went out to the Hollywood Bowl last night, and we might as well have been naked. It was just. <laughs> It was, uh, I, I, I sort of thought, oh, I should have worn a disguise or something. This is a bit, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's, 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 it's very extravagant and very, um, and it's very respectful. People are really talk from the heart. Um, um, it's extraordinary and it's a very good thing. Um, wow. That's yeah. amazing. The Hollywood ball. That's awesome. All right, Brian, I, you know, all, all the, most of Nick Mohammed's scenes this season are separate from the rest of y'all. Uh, and especially in the more recent episodes that we've had a chance to see, we see that as much as it would be easy to hate Nate, Nate the former great, um, we're seeing a big evolution in him. I, I love the confidence that he is gaining as a person separate from mm. this forced confidence as a as a as a professional uh just how awesome is nick mohammed mm -hmm. very <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah nick's nick's great um and him you know rolling with the punches we're throwing him is just you know marvelous you know and the, his his big speech to ted at the end of season two you know is still such a like powerful moment uh you know for me um you know i i've, I've said this I said this before, but I still think, you know, when I get asked, like, which character do you think you're most like? And like, hey, I mean, DNA wise, Nate, um, <laughs> you know, in terms of like being a guy, you know, Nate is a guy who is, has been given um, stuff he deserves, but he's being given it before he's dealt with the reasons why he's not there yet, if that makes sense. And mm -hmm. he's just kind of not ready. Um, and, uh, you know, I never had any kind of bad blowups like like he offers Ted, but uh, but still it was like, woof. Yeesh, that could have happened. <laughs> um, and he's, he's just, he's just fantastic. You know, um, we hired all these actors who we'd never worked with, but um, in the case of Nick, I had seen him perform at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 2007. And, um, and, and like, I couldn't remember his name necessarily, but like, when I would think back to that summer, I'd be like, that guy was really good. Um, and then suddenly he's there auditioning uh, for, I believe the role of Higgins originally. Um, and, uh, and, you know, Higgins had already been claimed by then, uh, the moment we saw Jeremy, like Jeremy was Higgins forever. Um, but it was like, that guy, that guy, oh, that guy's great. We gotta, we, we bring that guy back. Um, and <laughs> so like for it, for it to have paid off so well, is just, it's just been delightful to watch. And so he's, he's a incredibly talented guy. Um, and I love a lovely bloke as well. A lovely bloke indeed. So last question I'm going to throw it to you, James, for, for anyone who hasn't had a chance to watch season three yet, and which is like, you know, blowing my mind here. Uh, what was the, what'd be the one thing that you could say to entice someone to not only watch it, but binge it as quickly as possible to get up to speed? Ooh, well, um, you mean if they've seen seasons one and two? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah, they need to, they need to get on board with the team because it's all about the team and, uh, and, and, and what's happening there on and on and off the field. 
you know for me i'm just very excited to see um what you know how are they going to do how are they going to do um in this league that that's the thing so i they need to catch up as soon as possible because you know mm. <laughs> i'm not yeah, going to say anything yeah, but yeah it's exciting I like that. Those are good last words. Mm. <laughs> Perfect place to end this conversation. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brendan and Jeremy and James for this amazing conversation. Also, big thanks to our friends at Apple TV Plus for making this conversation possible. And thank you for everyone watching. Thank you for joining us for today's half hour with Ted Lasso. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.